Hey, 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 my name is Polish Links. Welcome to a demo of cosplay convention crisis. So I got an email from Hidden Levels uh, about the demo being out, about the Kickstarter being started. Uh, actually, exactly, uh, almost 24 hours ago. Uh, yeah, it's almost, almost there. Exactly 12 p.m. Let's play it. Last day before the last shift. Anyway, uh, so basically about the convent, the game about the convent. If you haven't been there, I haven't been to any of those, even if I wish I was. But yeah, if you haven't, let's let let's go together for the first one over here. If you have been there, well, attend another one with us. Uh, the game by. Well, but it's not by the, the uh, Midnight Hearts. Midnight Hearts are the makers of the game, supposedly to be released in 2020. The demo, of course, Steam, uh, Itch.io, which I downloaded it from, uh, and I found no on Kickstarter. There is a link to those two. So if you want to play by yourself, go get the demo from there. We are going to start it now. Let's see what this is about. Uh, cosplay convention crisis contains teams that are adult in nature. Yes, however, everything that is not safe for, for work uh, will not be around because I did not install the patch. So, ha. Are you of legal age in your country of residence? Yes, I am. Uh, the following program is a product of Studio Midnight Hearts. Okay, so I didn't need to check this out. Let's go! Uh, this demo is not representative of the final game, it's a pre build. Okay, well, that's what demos are, yeah. And in the original characters, reference are copyrights of the original creator and only do that in the basis of the parody. Cool. Uh, what's the, what are those? Uh, on Sunday, October 23rd, Jacob Kirby. Died at the age of 21. Oh. The way he died would have been completely unpredictable just a few days prior. While in the middle of massive dispute, a beam of focus light energy struck him in the heart. Huh? At the moment of contact, it blew a hole in one end and out the other. Jacob was dead in seconds. His body crumpled like a house with its foundations pulled out. The last thing he would see was the sympathetic eyes of a killer staring down at him. Not a thing about it. Did they make any trailers of the game? Anyway, perhaps if Jacob Kirby had made different decisions in his life, he wouldn't have ended up in this situation. One year ago. This game has been around for a while. Why didn't I know about it? Uh, perhaps Jacob Kirby might have lived to see his 22nd birthday. Perhaps Conton wouldn't have been the last convention he would ever get to attend. What is going on? But maybe there was no way Jacob, Jacob Kirby could have avoided such a heartless end. Maybe from the moment he met his killer, it was destined that she would be one to kill him. Perhaps, maybe, perhaps, maybe, life is strange that way. And the present day, Thursday, October 20th morning. I was one of the first people in the back of the bus. I walked to the back and claimed the center seat, where everyone probably expected me to sit. Now to think about it. Okay, no, I need to keep it actually on. My name is Jacob Kirby, and today is the first day, October 20th, the first day of Conton. The right side of the bus was being taken up by the comic club, the left side by the anime society, which meant that as the only member of both clubs, I probably had to take the one middle seat. I understand why it would be in both. 
Then again, it probably could should have been called Manga Society. Anyway, the other students filed field into one side or the other. They better look at one another. Fun fact. At my school, the Anime Society and Com Club hated one another with a burning passion. Yeah, okay, it kinda is like this around the world as well, right? Isn't there? One hate the other. That's weird as heck. Too bad that I kinda would belong to both as well. Anyway. Also the gaming club. Which is why it was amusing that this year, Conton, the local anime convention, was joining up with Cape City. Cape City is Australia, isn't it? Or, I think it is. Quick, quick check. Why? Oh, oh my god. Cape City, as in Cape Town. Okay, never mind. You guys have conventions there? A local comic book convention, and it was doubly amusing that the school metro only lent us on the bus. But wasn't there Cape City in Australia as well? I feel like there was something like that. Of course, there is Cape Town as well there. No, there... wait a second. Okay, what was in my mind thinking? Hmm. Okay, what? I don't know what was the city that was in on my mind when I was thinking it was in Australia now. Ah. N never mind. I went over my back one last time. Batch, check! Outfits, check! Outfits. Uh, check! Food, so I didn't have to pay the other food court prices. Check and check. I smiled. No boring classes. No life sucking part time job. No obnoxious fantasy football obsessed roommate. Another club I probably would be a member of. At least back then, in the day. Now, not so much, I guess. Ah, this was going to be a great weekend. Could not think about it. Uh, one of the co workers has been bugging me a lot lately. Asking, why did I quit? Hey, you've been training so long. Eight years. Why did you quit? Tell me. Ah, but it would take. Too much time to explain. Maybe someday. Anyway. Please tell me you actually have your badge this time, damn shit! Ooh, hello. A girl in boyish clothes threw her backpack into the seat opposite mine and sat down. I gave half a wave. Uh, if it was in my backpack the entire time, then I didn't lose it. Amanda, if I had lost it, I wouldn't have actually had it. Yeah. If you didn't have it around your neck and you weren't able to get into the con, I'm pretty sure that's called losing it. I, I guess she's correct about that. Amanda had been my neighbor in elementary school. Oh boy. I still... Where did I get that Australia from? <laughs> oh my, it, it, it will keep bugging me, man. Middle school... High school, oh boy. Childhood friends. Which means... You are destined to not be date... In the game by me. <laughs> More or less. And also, I guess, we went to the same college now. Yeah. She had learned how to, as she put it, frequently tolerate me. Are you going to tell me what cosplays you actually brought yet? 
You just have to wait and see. Mm. Tell me this much. Did you bring any female characters this time? In my entire life, I get. I swear to God, only see her cosplay as a female character twice. Once it was Domino from the Y people. Uh, yeah, Y people. I don't know what this is referring to. The other time it was Illuminant from Final Fantasy 13. I think I know who we were talking about in the second one. If I really haven't played Final Fantasy, though. like barely anything. I know Tifa for. Anyway, both of whom look rather androgynous. This had been something of a pattern with Amanda for a while. Her only sport was intramural frisbee. What the fuck is that? I intramural frisbee. So it's like football, but with a frisbee. No, it's like. Oh, I know what this is. It's a freaking. Rugby frisbee, okay. I think at least. Uh, I had literally never seen her in a dress before. She actually wore a tux to high school prom. But you know, tomboyish. Uh, well, girls basically, they are kind of tomboyish. Once they wear a dress, they look astonishing, man. That's a fact. Would be surprised to you know that I bring a female character this time? Not if she has short hair and dresses gender neutral. Does she have short hair and dress gender neutral? Are you going to be cosplaying again this year? Anything actually? Yep, but if you aren't telling me what you brought, well that fair then fair is fair. And I granted and recross arms. Before the conversation could go anywhere, another familiar face stepped into view. A sweet, familiar, devilish face. Oh, the seat next to you is open? Ooh, Makoto Mine approached us with her usual playful grin. Amanda's brow eventually furrowed into a glare. Let me guess, one of them is in anime club, the other in manga club. Makoto! Hey, Makoto! Amanda's voice was dogger, mine meanwhile went down two octaves. Makoto seemed oblivious, her smile was unshakable. Makoto Mine was an international student from Kyushu, Japan. Okay, that one I would know, thanks game, you didn't need to tell me, okay? I know where Kyushu is, surprisingly. Uh, but you wouldn't know that from her accent. Her English? Totally flawless. We'll see about that. I met her for the first time at the beginning of the year, in Anime Society. So you are from the Anime Society. Okay, I... I'm sorry, I would totally assume it was the other way around. From minute one, she made my head spin. For some reason, she was all over me. Touches, glasses, everything. You lucky bastard. It was something of a dilemma. On one hand, what straight man hates affection from... Okay, you know what? Let's assume that that Cape Town I was talking about is on, in Australia, actually. Because, sorry. I doubt someone would go on, like, uh, what exchange program was it? Mm, well, I guess. I'm an international student, so it would be exchange, I guess. I doubt someone would go from Japan to South Africa on a, an exchange. I'm sorry, South Africa. But I can't believe it, okay? I I just can't. Australia on the other hand, and, uh, yeah, I think it's possible. Anyway, uh, on one hand, what straight man hates affection from a hot girl, on the other hand, I got definitely on the crazy side of the hot crazy scale. Hey, 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 hot crazy scale, we know that. And then there was the incident. What, what? Friday, October 7th, two weeks ago. I'd spent the better part of the attack on Cyclops, movie holding my bladder. I could have gone to the bathroom and missed part of it, but at the time, staying and squirming, squirming had seemed a better option. A few seconds after I flushed, I'd heard a sound about from the door. I was still collecting my bearings. 
I figured it was just another guy coming in. Probably someone else from Anime Club. What I would have been out of my mind to expect was the door to my stall being slammed open. You could say I was cut with my pants down by this turn of events. I mean... Uh, technically, that's what happened. So... You lucky bastard! What? Why did that never... Why has that never happened to me in my life? So that's where you were hiding? You had me worried you would leave before we could spend any time together? Makata was standing there in the bathroom, looking into my stall. There was no illusion that this was an innocent prank. Hell, she'd even taken off her shirt. When had she taken off her shirt? Do you have a tattoo? Okay, uh, to be honest, that's a place that tattoo is... Never looking good. That's just my honest opinion here. Anyway, my eyes were caught by her creamy pale... Skin? Why had she taken off her shirt? After I managed to put my brain back together, the first thing I did was cover up. She must have had a solid 5 seconds of watching my exposed. You know what? Before I could even stop her. Oh, you don't need to do that. I was liking the view. What, what are you doing? She took a step forward. The gap between us was closing. Her eyes were hungry. Hungry. It was something I never quite seen a woman before in my entire life. Just relax for a second, Jacob. I know you must be pretty confused right now, but if you just close your eyes, I can make you feel really, really good. She was blushing slightly. My compression and my cheeks were probably stopped like red. I've been told I'm very good at it, you know. You've you you've been told. Uh, change of plans, guys. We are chasing the childhood friend. Maybe. Making men... F <coughs> I'm sorry. Making men feel good. I can make you feel good too. Just close your eyes. Close them tight. And relax. I was paralyzed. Totally paralyzed. Her body was so close to me and she was only getting closer and closer to me by the second. I don't know what to do. This was wrong, wasn't it? Her bursting in like this. Part of me just wanted to let this happen. Look, Makoto, this is um, uh, this is pretty weird. Uh, I mean, take, can, can we take a second, just s slow down, uh, talk this through? But Makoto didn't seem to be in a mood to talk through anything. She looked hungry, her lips parted, drawing closer for a kiss. It would be so easy to just... No, 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 this was too weird. No, we're not this, you shouldn't have been here, you need to go! I rose to my feet now. My position was solidifying. How had she thought this? Okay, did she think she could just ambush me on the toilet? Yes. The answer is yes. Go now. That did a trick. My god's face sank to a strange throw. I could almost see the gears in her head spinning. I marched my eyes to hers. It was easier to keep my resolve than ah, uh, then had I looked down at her exposed. You know. Okay. I'll see you next week then, Jacob. Toodles. Poodles, what? Ah, and just like that, she threw her shirt over her shoulders and just walked out of the stall. It was like for her. No, that really happened. It was all nothing but a game. And that's the problem for us. Makoto was true to her word. She showed next week at Anime Society, pretending that none of this had ever happened. I suppose it was easier for me to try to pretend it didn't happen to. I could slid into the next seat, uh, into the seat next to me, and curled up into la it like a cat who'd found a warm lap. Oh, and she was grinning too. That was always a good sign. There are, uh, um, there are open seats around. Don't you think you'd like one year more, anime club members? Makoto giggled. Amanda's guard then gave her an inch. Why? I like the back of the bus, and there's such great company here! 
You're not good at taking hints, are you? I'm not new, of course. I told her practically an hour after it had even happened. Why? At the time, she'd implied that I should have tried to sue her for sexual assault. Why? She very strongly implied it. Well, that's not going to happen. Well, I'm not sitting next to you, am I? Okay, I'm not sure if the webcam is really working correctly. Seems kinda slowish. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully. Anyway. I think Jacob should be one to decide if I sit with him or not. You'll notice I'm sitting next to him and not next to you. Makoto turned to me with a prayer gesture and big round kitten eyes. Do you want me to go, Jacob? Do you? Let's hear it, Jacob. Do you want Makoto to go? I sigh. Maybe it would be better to send her away. Deep down, I had calmed down about the whole incident. And it's not like I would mind having her throw herself on me for the entire ride too much. Obviously. She probably just liked me, but didn't know how to express herself right. For if I let her stay, a mother would probably spend the entire day time glaring at her. And probably hit me too. But I could get a bit catty when she was mad. Perhaps it would be better to consider her feelings. Yeah, I mean... Oh, where is the save button? Where is the save button? Are you the save button? Yes, you are. Save. What? Oh my god. Don't scare me like that game. You know what? You should stay. Just let her stay. She's got to sit somewhere beside. Makoto isn't going to cause any trouble on the bus. I turned to Makoto and stared at her with as much intensity as I could. It was not a face that left much up to interpretation. Right. Hmm, I'm just an innocent little kitty. I promise I won't make a fuss. Fine. Amada's facial expression was locked in a death glare that could probably kill a weak willed mortal with a single glance. I didn't see you at any society last week, were you busy? Yeah, I had a shift at work. The normal guy who covered it took off. Oh, wait, I have five here? What's this? Whatever. Points for the girl? Anyway. Oh, that's a shame, it was pretty boring meeting for. We just played anime trivia for half of it. You didn't miss anything. I bet you spent the entire time checking the door to see if he'd show up, didn't you? Makoto, of course, continued her new policy of only ignoring Amanda. At that moment, the bus kicked into gear. The trip to Canton was on its way. For the first 10 minutes, we chatted eagerly. Amanda was mostly quiet, but would interject here and there, mainly for sniping at Mikoto. Makoto spent that time lavishing with attention. Yeah, here is the difference. One is actually... Uh, trying to get the attention, the other is not, he, she's attacking the other one. Hmm, that's why, I'm gonna say it, that's why I don't like childhood friends. They are waiting and waiting and waiting with any move for ages. Years even, like here. And when the competition kind of arrives, they can't really fight it off. They have no way of doing that. Anyway, there were a few moments in here where I seriously had to stop myself and ask what reality did Makoto drop her here from. Bubbly and attractive, but still following me around. Seriously? Do you want to hear what cosplays I brought with me? No. I guess. Well, I got this cool Red Phoenix outfit for cheap. Red Phoenix. I think I know what you're talking about. I'm not much of a comic book fan, but I really like the material. Latex. <laughs> oh, I also have this wonderful cat girl made cosplay based on chocolate from Cat's Paradise. I put it together myself. You've played Cat's Paradise, right? No, but I like it already. Ah, if there were even a moment to have a pass button for conversation for a conversation, it would be this one. What are you talking about? This is great. 
The problem was that I actually had played Cat's Paradise. It was this sealed cat grandmate visual novel that was decently popular. I need to play it. That's right, I said. Hentai? No, I didn't. That's the kind of game we are dealing with here. What are you talking about? I know what you are talking about. It was a visual novel as well. On one hand, I could seriously deny ever having a, even heard of it, but on the other hand, Makoto was so out of this world bonkers that she might actually prefer me to open and talk about a hentai game. I, I feel like she would prefer that. Yeah, I... Yes, I, I honestly don't feel like hiding this from people I know. I mean, I tried that for a few hours, just out of curiosity, you know. A friend of mine owned a copy. Makoto giggled. There was no way she didn't see through my line about a friend, too. Some, I mean, how did you borrow it? On Steam? Are you kidding? Me? I don't... Ah, what? Still, somehow, I'd actually had the courage to say that in public. That was surprising. For her part, Amanda raised an eyebrow. What's a cat's paradise? Neither Makoto or I answered that question. Anyway... I have two more cosplays planned, but they are secrets. A girl's got to have some prizes, you know. So you have four outfits? Damn. That's some dedication. Makoto gave me a flirtatious wink. It reminded me how much I still didn't know about her and her motives. I decided to test a theory. Actually, Makoto, I have a question for you. Oh, what is it? I didn't get any points from that question, though. That's kind of bothering me. What did your last... Boyfriend. Think of the fact that, you know, well, what did he think of how much you like geeky stuff like anime and age games? It's kind of funny, but I've actually never had a boyfriend before. What? Well, at least not like a proper boyfriend. What do you mean? I could scratch up shiny at the question, but didn't break her usual playful expression. Really? That's pretty surprising for a girl as pretty as you. Do you have strict parents or something? I hate this. This totally... I would like to say this totally doesn't make sense compared to what happened like a week ago, was it? But... On the other hand, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. You think I'm pretty? You're a sweet! And another answer to the confusing pile. Was she being genuinely bashful or was she screwing with me? It was something like that for the circumstances were just never right for me. It's all up, up until the few past few months or so, I was always too busy. With the implications of up until the past few months didn't elude me. Before I could ask a, a follow up. Amanda coughed twice into her hand. What? Are you seeking attention? I think we're going to be there soon. I saw the 7 Eleven and on Oak Street, and I remember it was only like 5 minutes away from the place. We should get ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I guess we should do that. Wait, wait, stop. We are going to be there soon. We should get ready to go. Wait, 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 wait. You're at the back of the bus. Listen, Amanda, if you are going to get out of there, first thing you stop, you're a terrible person. You wait until everyone before you gets out. Do you understand me? <sighs> That's how it works. Anyway. You're stinking room 302, right? Not your business. Wait, who asked this? Uh, Makoto perked up the question on the mouth as swear word. My guess was that she hadn't done to say that loud enough for Makoto to hear. Great, I'm just right down the corridor in 304. After you've settled in, you should come over so we can play, plan what panels to go to. Who said I'm going with you? I nodded. Sorry, well, I 
Again, I don't like childhood friends. The bus, the bus was pulling to the convention center. I'm curious about the last one. Anyway, the bus was pulling to the convention center by this point. The Fox African. Mm, so we are in South Africa after all. I hate myself. Decorations such as waterfalls and lion statues outside the building dominated the rows and rows of grey parking lots. In truth, the convention center was more of a hotel than anything. A kitschy resort for families to their kids too. But the fact that it was attached to a sprawling side building made it an ideal site for a con of this size. I looked towards Makoto, realizing that she was practically tugging my sleeve. She didn't like being ignored, that's for sure. Clearly, I couldn't, or perhaps shouldn't, leave this bus without scheduling something with her as well. Do you know what you're going to be doing, the con? Wait, 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 wait. I mean, she knows what she's going to be cosplaying, yes. But, probably, do you know what you're going to be doing during the con? Marco's face brightened. Mm, I don't know just yet, but I'm positive that we'll see each other around. We could always hit up the rave tonight. I tried to answer, but my voice caught in my throat. The image of her bald dancing and swaying to the heavy music under the light of glow sticks was... was well, it was at least confusing. That was for sure. There was some time to answer anyway. A moment later, the bus rolled to a stop. Students started pining off, eager to get to their room and plan their day. Makoto softly brushed her side against me as she stood. Then she vanished in the crowd with one last filtratious wink. Think you're starting a bit much? Staring? Sorry? Think you're staring a bit much, Casanova? I'm not stirring. If I wanted to stir, I would have back in the buffer when she didn't have a shirt on. I still don't understand why you'd st Why did you tell her about that? I mean, oh my god, she's clearly a competition, and given that she's a childhood friend, I wouldn't be surprised if she used that, you know, to spread a rumor. That happens. I'm sorry, but that happens. Should I say it? No, I shouldn't. Or maybe I should? No, I will not. But, yeah, personal experience, kinda. We suppose childhood friend. Oh, well, I guess we are not friends anymore. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Anyway, uh, maybe you should have, then you wouldn't have had to drool over her in front of me. Then disappear. Oh, shut up. I was just trying to be polite. You know she doesn't have many friends. I'm on the side. No matter how much she tried to stay annoyed, there was just no way she could keep a straight face. We were both too comfortable for lingering bitterness. Besides, there were bigger fish to fry. Amanda stood up, extending a hand to help me join her. Hey, it's not like I'm on the ground and I need help to get up. I'm on a seat. Really? Oh my god. The minute you stopped hoeing her politeness was when she invaded your bathroom sh stall trying to f do something to you. <laughs> something good. Come on, Moron. Everyone's already left the bus. Okay, you have plus one point for not leaving the bus early. Well, Makoto, well... Let's say she kinda wanted to run away from the situation, okay? She felt uncomfortable. Anyway. What the freaking freaking fuck? Why do you have a freaking gorilla in the apartment? Uh, the first thing the first thing I did after getting to the convention center was to go to my room. And I ask myself, why the hell is there a painting of a gorilla in my room? That's the second thing. Then I told you I was sharing it with two other people who I'd never met before, but were in the comic club with me. How did you not meet them if they were there? Ah, neither of my roommates had shown up yet. Naturally, I used this golden opp- Why do I feel like they didn't come? Uh, naturally, I used this golden opportunity to claim one of the beds for myself and be in unpacking. 
first day was normally a short day, but I did have a cosplay planned. As I got in my suit, my eyes were drawn to a unique feature of the room. Is it what I was talking about? Is that a portrait of Garrida? Why is that even here? I'm surprised he noticed it so late. The girl portrait had eyes that followed you around the room, like those old Uncle Sam posters. Oh, creepy. They stared down at my undressed body, ominously. Creepy! This hotel was totally weird. What was this even thing here? I tried to throw on my outfit in a hurry. Amanda was still waiting for me in the room 304 after all. But before I could even leave, there was a knock on the door. Good. Hello? Really? All I have to say about this cosplay. Got tired waiting. Someone was being a girl about getting dressed. Yeah, sorry about how long it took. I was in a string contest with a gorilla. What? I pointed out the strange luminous gorilla painting for her. I wanted to just seem to find my reaction kind of funny. Yeah, I've seen with her shit and dead. Nothing faces me anymore, I guess. We're going. Pounds already starting. Okay, I... I don't want to say that, but... This, this is what I'm thinking, right? Yeah, it's the character I'm thinking. I don't want to hang around with a green lantern. I'm sorry. I'm not already off running towards the hallway before I could agree. I dropped my backpack. Key card and followed her. She paused in the hallway. Oh, I can't freaking. Uh, only a few yards away from the house. This girl's so cute, man. Uh, from the hall where all the pounds were concentrated. Hey, one freak about what happened in the bus. Just real quick. Wow, that sounded serious. I paused to hear me her out. What's up? I don't trust Makoto. I don't trust her too, but it's still the one I want to chase after. You were doing such a bad job showing back on the bus. I mean, I don't like her. That's obvious. I mean, that she, I think she's lying to you about something. Every word out of her mouth is some kind of manipulation. I have to keep my distance far away. To be honest, she can manipulate me however she wants. Lies. Why do you think that? To be honest, I don't know. She just gives me the creeps. Hell, I felt that way even before the bathroom incident. I paused. Unsure of how to respond, Amanda is one of the people I trust most. I don't, so it's good. If Shirley didn't trust someone, I should take it seriously. Still, Shirley was taking this grudge of her hers against Makoto way too far. Amanda looked down, then she nodded. If you say so, I just don't want to deal with your whiny ass when she reveals she's crazy. I mean... Crazy hot scale. Uh, whatever. You know. Vzum, vzum, vzum. Always like that. Afterwards, Amanda went back to ranting about what part. For, you know, it's not about always. It might be crazy about something in particular, right? Uh, po -po -po. Okay, Amanda went back to ranting about what particular panels she wanted to go to. It was as if that interlude had never happened. In the fact, that to surprise no one, she rejected outright any of my suggestions for an anime-based panel. Without even the slightest bit of consideration. Okay, so basically you are telling me... You are going only where she wants? Wow. Alright, so it's not quite lunch time. That means we have time to go, either the panels or Marvel's movie. No. Movie adventures of, or the interview with the creator of Bane? No. What do you think? <sighs> do you have any guess at the Marvel's movie one? Nah, it was fun submitted. So, tiny projector, PowerPoint presentation. Probably a guy who sucks at public speaking. I want to shrug. They could know something about comic book movies for... You never know, right? Plus, not necessarily a guy. So, the con floor was already packed with activity. Much of it was in front of the registration desk, where a line of people on the door were waiting to buy badges. This why, this was why buying badges ahead of time is smart. 
You know what? I said I'm after Makoto, but I still don't know who the third character is. One second, someone is calling me. Time to run, man. Run. Oh god damn it, it worked. What do they want? I raised an eyebrow. Since when do I have a job? She has a job? Oh. And she did not tell her, you know, crush, I guess. Interesting. Very interesting. Today, you can't be serious. You guys can handle it with me. This is my off weekend. I told you guys, wait in my dance. Yeah, I know it's important, but time is important too. Do you know how much stress you cause me? She took her phone off her ear for a second and leaned back, back towards me. Can you go ahead? We can just meet each other in the food court lunch. Are you sure? Positive, there is no way they are talking me into coming to work on the cont on the weekend. No way in hell, but I need to take this right now. Alright, you have my number, I suppose. I wandered around the hallway looking for something to do. Now that Amanda wasn't here, I could consider going to one of the animal panels, but I kept on losing my train of thought. That had been her calling for. Uh, that had been her work calling, right? Amanda had relatively frequent absence and cancellations from social activities, at least over the past two years or so, but I didn't recall her once mentioning any kind of job. I would have to ask her about that at some point. In the back of my mind, I considered the possibility that I might run to Makoto. If I did, what would happen when it was time to meet up with Manda for lunch? Nothing. We will go to lunch with Makoto. The incident on the bus wasn't to be repeated. I decided to just go outside for an hour, watch some of the people rolling the con. I might even see cool cosplayer too. There is a cat. There is a lion. Where is a damn lynx? Okay, I know, I know, top right corner. But still. It was nice out. The grass field in front of the entrance made an excellent place to rest in. I wondered if when the Crash Bros tournament was going to be. I need to sign up for that. I've never played that. I played Crash, but I didn't play Crash Bros. All my normal worries were about to be superseded quite soon. I barely noticed at first a group of three sci-fi cosplayers, one blue girl and two dressed like robots, were walking around the grass holding up some kind of fake scanning device. This appears to be location specified on locator, your highness. I just closed my eyes and tried to ignore them. What show were they supposed to be from anyway? Is this where the strongest signal was coming from? Negative! We lost that sign on the Royal Highness, really some kind of cloud technology to cost. Oh, and they were all playing their characters. Wonderful! They saw me trying to sleep here, right? And we believe that the signal was associated with the culprit, correct? Eh, uh, wrong voice. Affirmative! Very well then, I will speak to the plant resident who is giving off the weaker signal. I can obtain more information from her. That was the moment that I woke to someone screeching in my face. What freezing your life? Right? My eyes shot open. The woman in the blue alien costume was standing right above me. They surrounded me. I had one of the robot cosplayers flanking me on either side. Hello. Oh, so you're on the list. Uh, excuse me, can I help you? Excellent. I didn't think you were dead, but I didn't know if her resident slept, so I had concerns. What is she exactly? She? What was this woman calling me a she? Someone was fucking with me. Someone was asking me fucking with me. Our record singer this creature is a human! But where are her breasts? Do humans not have breasts? He! I'm a he! I'm a guy! Also, some of them have. I narrow my eyes. The report singer the human species poses a gender besides female. They're still in the process of evolving the Y chromosome out of their gender makeup. What? Well, that better not happen. So, this is a male human? That's why there aren't any breasts. Again, it happens with some of them. That is correct, Hero Lion Iris. That is so... Interesting! The girl in the blue body paint practically shook with excitement as she said it. Jesus, she was method acting hard. I was getting pretty tired of this shit already. Can you tell me what's going on now? Certainly. My name is Talia. 
and I'm the princess and justicer of Avia. I've come to take you into custody with the intention of extracting information related to a high crime against the people of Avia. Custody, huh? You guys are really cute with your character acting, but would you mind doing it with someone else? This isn't funny. I tried to push my way past them, only for one of the robot cosplayers to suddenly grab my wrist. We realize what's happened. My wrists are restrained behind my back by something called the metal. Hey, what are you doing? Haha, <laughs> my ginoids weren't going to let you escape so easily. Come now, we must transport back to the holding cells. This has obviously stopped being funny. Get me out of these things right the fuck now. I turned around in time to see one of the robot cosplayers open up. There wasn't a cosplay inside. <laughs> that was normal. It looked like it had some internal sensor or something that it was scanning me with. I made a strange beeping noise. That sure didn't look like something that cosplayer would make. This was the first time I seriously entertained the notion that these weirdos might actually be aliens. Look, I swear I have no idea what's going on. Can we please take a second and talk this out? Maybe remove whatever you put on my wrists? I cannot do this, Sir Mayor. The crimes I'm investigating are among the most heinous in the history of my planet. You must be brought back for questions. Okay, I doubt any human being would travel at the moment to your country, first of all. Wiggled my hands, no luck. These weren't a pair of cheap handcuffs like you could get in a novelty shop in a mall. I wouldn't be able to escape from this without at least bolt cutters or a blowtorch. Do not struggle so much, I'm not trying to harm you, but my ginoids restraining cuffs are designed to make escape attempts quite painful. Please relax, I'm not intend to harm you unless it becomes needed. This distinctly sounded like a threat. Despite my misgivings, I stopped struggling against the cuffs. Your Highness, our scans picked up a new sign with the same trace signature as the original sign on the side of the building. Inside of the building? Is the clock device they were using down? Likely not. It suggests that the clock device was simply not powerful enough to hide the signal from a close radio scan. So then, we can ha find her, yes? <laughs> Indeed. Could it be? That our childhood friend is a bad person. Excelsior! What? Talia made a strange celebratory clicking sound. By this point, our song music couldn't even process it. It was just one more mental indignity on top of the string of them that had been the last few minutes. We must move immediately. The dastardly thief shall not escape me again. Wait, 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 wait. what about me? What about you? One of us would need to leave you behind to escort the human male back to the ship, your Highness. My name is Jacob, stop calling me the human male. To escort Jacob back to the ship? Taliha, Taliha scratched her head. I don't know if I spelled that name properly. Can you just escort this Jacob with us in the healing? Well, yeah, however, there is a risk that Jacob's accomplice might free him. I rolled my eyes. I don't have an accomplice. Only involved in anything. This is bullshit! Taliha paused. I paused too. I won't silence passed between us before she arrived and answer. Let us take her with us. Then, it's quite likely she can at least hide us as a guide inside of a building. She. Before I could protest, the ginoids reached down and dragged me to my feet. She picked me up into the air easily with a single hand. Okay, that also didn't seem like something a normal cosplayer could do. Hold my perfect friend! Justice demands it! Monica! Okay, we need to play Doki Doki at some point. The longer I was forced to walk with the bizarre trio, the more my fear and confusion turned back to annoyance. Taniko was basically a four year old. She would react to everything she saw by getting wide eyed and pointing to it. The worst part was that I couldn't escape. Every time I tried to move more than a few feet in one direction, one of the ginoids would pull me back. No one stopped to help me. To them, it must have looked like part of some cosplay. Talika pointed to a man and a woman dressed as Joker and Harley Quinn. Why are so many of the Earth creatures? Humans. Why are all of these Earth humans wearing such varied apparel? Is this what you were while doing traditional or spiritual activities? I rolled my eyes back. What? No, not really. It is a geek fandom convention. We are something costumes at these based on our favorite shows. What is show? So is it a religious ceremony of some type? I guess you could call that one. 
anthropology and these systems, the chance it is religious holiday at 78%. I arrived at the next place of evidence that suggested perhaps Talika might not be from this planet. At the door with normal turning handle. What? What do you mean normal turning handle? What does it mean? They handled it with less than finesse. For the next full minute, the girl proceeded to try to repeatedly open the door with various hand gestures. Then she tried turning to open. Then she tried hand gestures. Then she jumped around the inflation. I just stood there dumbfounded. If this was just play acting, then she was awfully good at it. It sure seemed like this woman, who was probably an adult, couldn't even open a door handle, right? Do you... Do you need help with that? Maybe? I walked over, turned around so I could use my hands, and then easily twist the open the doorknob. Incredible! You're in from around here, aren't you? I squinted carefully. The more close I looked at her skin, the less it looked like body paint. Indeed? I'm sure... I'm sure how you claim to believe you are being deceived. After all, we had not attempted disguises or infiltration tactics. Talika leveled. Now that I think about it, in current times, yeah. You wouldn't need to do that. Damn. Even if it wasn't cosplay, just your everyday day, you wouldn't need that. Crazy. Unless you actually look like a freaking lizard. Anyway, uh, Talika leveled her, leveled her head upwards and let loose a series of strange clicking sounds from earlier. Was this how her species showed amusement? You're also kind of dork, aren't you? My translator program does not even know what that means! Talika and I continue as the panel hallways towards the entrance to both the game room and the dealer room. After a while, I tried to make another instant plea. Innocence plea. I was hoping that now that I was more convinced she was actually an alien and had established some report, I could get the bendings off. You've told me that someone stole something important from your planet. And sure, I had nothing to do with that. I've never even left Earth. I don't know why your machine thinks. Keep on telling me it was my fault, but I've done nothing wrong. I want to prove it to you. However, I can. I'm a, I am a justice of Avia, Jacob. If you are genuinely guiltless, then you will be treated mercifully. I'm a defender of truth and the law. What would I do if an innocent was hurt under my watch? You have not been the most cooperative prisoner thus far. I opened the door for you. But I like you well enough. I hope you are indeed telling the truth and I can release you when the situation is cleared up. Without hurting you even. Thanks. Well, that hadn't gotten the cuffs off, but her posture was much less threatening. Progress? We passed by the little room without instant. That only left one major hallway. Sounds squoffed. Squoffed? Squoffed? Squeaked? Squ 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 what the hell is that word? Squeaked? I don't know. Out of the robot's chests. Probably these scanners. Taliha tensed. I tensed too. We turned the corner to the game room and... Then we ran to a familiar face. Makoto. Jacob! Thief! Talika reached to her suit and seemingly from nowhere drew a comical looking sci-fi weapon. Damn, that that's a one good looking dress. She held it aloft in one hand, glaring sternly at Pakota. For her part, Pakota was still gasping. Return the treasure stole from my people and surrender at once, you find the event! Do that and yourself will be comfortable! She leveled the gun towards Makoto. Some people crowded around the scene from their whispers. Perhaps they might have thought this was some kind of photoshoot or game. Just like my earlier captivity. Oh, I know you! It's a justice, sir! Wait, 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 what? Makoto took a step backwards, partially turning away bashfully. Talia kept her toy looking unsteady on her. I guess I'm just going to have to give in and... Run away? Whoa! Whoa! A flash of red light blinded me. I didn't know what was happening, but the sounds of weapons firing convinced me to duck. Good plan. When the light faded, Makoto had shifted into a strange red latex outfit that clung tightly to the curves of her body. Around us, the other people who'd been watching blinked a few complaint about the light show. At least for the moment, I'm more concerned about the strange cipher weapon that had suddenly appeared in Makoto's, Makoto's hand. It was aimed at Talika who had recited her aim back to Makoto. 
They were in a Mexican standoff. Mexican standoff, really. There was also one major change situation for. Behind me, both robots Talika had been accompanied by were laying on the ground, destroyed. Smoke rose from their chests. In the confusion, Hedy Makoto shot them. On the upside, the moment they went down, the cuffs around my wrists clicked open, perhaps because the robot they were connected to was destroyed. Oh, you thought just because you found me that I'd be speaking. That's good. No wonder it was so easy to get past you first time. Don't you dare mock me, you villain score! I'm not a marginoid, I'm the justice robot of you. If you think I did such, that is it. You are mistaken. You're coming home with me! If you resist further, I will bring home your rushes instead! Justice Rafavia! If you don't bring me in, I wonder how long you'll have that title for. Maybe I've already demoted you, and you don't know it! Interplanetary communication can be so wildly imprecise, you know! Wait, are you telling me Makoto is from another planet as well? Tell has path to the side. I crawled near that down giant. With some luck, maybe I could use them for cover. Whatever was going on, I was still positive those guns were dangerous. I told you to be silent! Talika fired the warning shot up in the air and then retrained her gun in Makoto. Part of the scene burst away in the haze of blue light. A few people pointed and chattered, but most still seemed to think it was show. A few were even clapping. The dynamic is disturbed by the sound of running and someone pushing through the crowd. I looked towards the sound. The prop the people in front were parted, and a new arrival entered the mix. Makoto! And Jacob! Amanda put her hands to her mouth in shock. I wiggled my cuffs, cuffed hands and groaned. Wait. Did you just say if I were not cuffed anymore? Can someone please help me over here? Before she could respond, Makoto gave me a wink and interjected. Give me just a second, babe! Talika turned back towards me, probably remembering my existence for the first time since the shooting had started. She looked like she'd been slapped. Ah, so you were her accomplice all along. You lied to me. You pretended not to be involved. Your sentence will be incredibly painful, Jacob. What? No. What dog can tell me what the fuck is going on? Probably not the absolute best for explanation, sweetie. She was right, of course. A single distraction could give the other girl the advantage. By the way, we have a nice view here. Two nice views. Surprisingly, for it was neither Talika nor Makoto who made the next move to change situation. It was Amanda. I can't believe I'm doing this. She took a sidelong glance towards me. Of all people, was that fear in her eyes? Amanda took a step forward and swung her arms in a dramatic circle. It almost looked like dancing. It might have been, an, it might have been the weirdest thing I'd seen all morning already. Amanda didn't dance. What? As her body moved, strangely, strangely, the strange lights appeared from the thin air, clinging on her. Even once her entire form was covered in blinding pink light. I hadn't expected this! Tadika gasped. Cursed one of our defenders, where? What a dark turn of this situation! His lights weren't enough. By themselves, Samata was soon covered in a second wave of throbbing energy, multi shaped pink flashes that took the shape of hearts. Ugh, no. Oh my god. Magical girl, really not a fun. Not a fun, sorry. In sudden burst of movement, Amanda emerged from the pink heart, spreading the light behind her like a halo. But this was an Amanda different than any I'd ever seen in my life. Her short boyish hair had been covered in a swirling back length mass of blonde locks. Her green lantern cosplay had been totally replaced by pink baby doll as codfeet adorned with lace and ruffles. She was even carrying a sparkling pink scepter. As she emerged from the transformation, Amanda's body moved robotically into a dramatic pose with her scepter, raised high in the air. It was like she was losing a fight with her own body. Ah, as far as it says, love will prevail! Oh my god. I hate those. I hate those things. Sorry. Not a fun. At last, the transformation was complete. The light dissipated, save for a halo of random sparking, she swiped her scepter towards the two combatants. Magical Defender Pink will save the day! Uh, it was only that moment that Amanda seemed to have realized she had an audience. And I'm cringing in that audience. 
The crowd was watching, I was watching Makoto and Tadiha were watching. Her face burned the brightest shade of red. I have never seen anyone's face reach my entire life. Uh, hey? Her arms flew up. How do you not realize that there were people around? Uh, her arms flew over her body in desperate time to cover up all of her exposed skin. She was practically crying. This was the approximate limit of my ability to process information. Aliens? Sure, why not? Makoto has stuff weapons and wears a boner inducing latex catsuit? She was already cool anyway. But this, this, this. I've known Amanda for 16 years. That's really the best majority of my life. And she was some kind of Maho Shoujo. My brain stopped. Wow, you know what? Childhood friends, magical girl, ultimately bad combination in my mind. What the fuck is happening? My god, I had also looked pretty shocked by the entire transformation, but I covered a few seconds later. Feeling good to undress your cutie? I know pink was your color. <laughs> Shut up! I'm not transporting plumbing, so. You're right. Talika turned and pointed her laser weapon at Manda. There is nothing you can do to stop this magical defender. Please leave Bentley. This criminal stole one of the three sacred treasures from the secret vault of Avia. She must be punished. Not so secret if they knew about it. Her face softened. It was more a plea than a threat. Amanda still tried to keep her body covered with her left hand. That's a lie, but pointed the tip of her scepter towards Talika. Earth is our jurisdiction. You don't have the right to do this. If you make a move to her, I will stop you. She turned to Makoto, for she tried to bury her cheeks in her shoulder to hide the blush. If you want me to save your stupid butt from this alien who definitely horribly wronged, you really should shut your mouth for five seconds, okay? Uh. Sorry, Amanda, but you are the one speaking, so. I wasn't able to say a word. I was barely able to even keep up with the conversation. It's really seem that you think I need your help with anything. Uh Her green darkened. Watch this! Huh? Talika realized a moment too late that her gun had been on the wrong target. Before she could bring it back to Fukusumakoto, a series of red blasts rang out from her weapons. Huh? Talika dodged, opening fire with her own series of laser strikes. Why, why, why are the strikes coming from the ceiling? <laughs> But the sudden shock marked the sack on the boat. A red beam struck Talika right in the chest. It burned a hole right to her and she fell to the ground with a scream. I don't think they achieved that effect. I know, but it was fucking amazing. In the chaos, Manda rushes over to Alika's side, training glitter sparkles with her step. Her hands went searching around, checking for vitals. Shake up! P please help me! What? Do I seem like I have magical powers? Nah, I did it. I was still almost paralyzed, but the request was just enough to get me scrum to her side. Blue alien blood dirtied the carpet. Teriko was still moving, but clearly fading fast. I looked back for Makoto, but she vanished without trace. It must have been easy in the confusion. You must return to my, me to my ship! She gra gripped in front of my shirt. Her blood covers it. Even if I die, there is a constant. a uh, contingency! What could I do? My brain was racing too fast. How would I even do it? Where was the ship? What would happen if I did? Clarity only came when I felt a glow hand on my shoulder. It was Amanda, and she was shaking almost as much as I was. Wait, so you are the defender and you are shaking in a situation like this? Are you kidding me? You should get fired. Do you know which way she came in from? Uh, front entrance? Got it. With the slightest of ease, she threw the girl over her shoulder and made the dash for the exit. Within seconds, the two were lost into the sea of people coming to the con. Now, I was the only one remaining. Me and you destroyed the Ginoids from... No, wait. The Ginoids had vanished too? How did that happen? The fuck was that? The crowd had already begun to disperse. The show was over. Eventually, an employee from the con came over and asked if I was part of their cosplay group. Something about damage to the ceiling. I was unable to stop stuttering long enough to the night. Fucking fuck. I stumbled back to my room and threw off my costume. Luckily, no one else was around. The prince of backstairs in my room had at least moved in already. 
I fell back on my bed. Talija. That girl hadn't been her man. Makoto. She knew Talija. She was the thief that Talija had been hunting. And now Talija was dead. I mean, we are not sure about that. And Amanda, where to even start with that one? The flash transformation sequence, the magical costume change, the fact that the tomboy queen. Tomboy queen. Okay, no, 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 no. How dare you? She's not even close to being tomboy queen. Was caught that in public in an outfit that looked half like an egg. If you want tomboys, uh, can't borrow Saruga. That's a good example. I gazed the painting on the wall. The Gordia gazed back down to me. Uh, who else? Uh, I think I have an idea. Who else? Uh, Tsugumi Seishiro. Another good one. Yeah, fuck you too, Gorilla Painting. <laughs> mm, after the entire ordeal, I said that I was in desperate need of a nice and relaxing shower. Also, me and my cosplay were both covered in blood, so I needed to do something about that. When I got out for the most of the thing I noticed was that there was now a letter sitting square in my bed. Okay. Old. When I opened it, I found a note addressed to me in squiggly handwriting. Dear beloved Jacob, I am deeply sorry that you had to be entangled in all of those shiny guns downstairs. For this does speed up my time tables. I did plan to tell you all about myself in time. Okay, so that's about Makoto, I think. I don't want you to think less of me for what happened. What I want least of all is for you to decide you don't want anything to do with me. So, regardless of when you read this, I want you to know I'm free to talk to. If you go to the food court, you'll find me. Don't worry, I'll know if you're heading in that direction. Love, Makuta. Okay, so she wanted to tell me about all that. I, I like her. I grit my teeth as I finish the letter. Makuta. Not going to add that one word behind the name, before the name. But before I could even consider if I want to visit with her, I looked over to my phone and said I'd receive a few texts while I was in the shower. Hey Jacob, I know that was probably not for you all at once. I know for a fact that I'm not happy with the way that turned out. I wanted to... I wanted to tell him better circumstances. Okay, that's bullshit. You know him for 16 years and you haven't told her your feelings. I know there are some. You wouldn't tell him about that. I'm sure of that. If you want to talk, can you come and visit me down the planet floor? I'm in the superheroes as metaphors. No. Panel wings see every hour or so outside by the room, just in case you don't get this for a while. I clutched the letter in one hand and my phone in the other. On one hand, holy shit, Amanda was magical girl. What the hell? I hate magical girls. On the other hand, Michael dropped a bunch of aliens and just shot Talika. What the hell? She's more interesting, basically. I mean, technically she's a thief, but I'm more interested in her. And she clearly makes a more interesting character, to be honest. Anyway, clearly I'd need to talk with one of them if I want the answers, but which of the two should I talk to was the question. And it's left to Polish links to choose, and the answer is obvious. Makoto. I walked into the game. I love that freaking costume. Can I... Uh, can I hide... Can I somehow hide this? No, I can't. Because I'm curious if it's a dress or not. Anyway, I walked into the food court. I instantly found Makoto right where she said she'd be. This tale overpriced pizza place. The moment she caught sign of me, she started frantically waving at me. I sighed. If you think Makoto was a hassle on normal days, Makoto. You're safe! Oh, Jacob, I was so worried about you when I saw that you had been captured by... I put my hand to stop her. Can you please just stop? I know it's an act, it's pointless. Just because it's an act doesn't mean it's pointless. I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. So, at the very least, she was going to give me some degree of information here. Wait, what? Okay. Basically... She just thought, okay, she thinks it's an act. 
let's keep it that way, I think. How is this said to be was a hard question. If I give her too much rope, she'd probably try to wiggle free, but she might respond poorly to a hard line of questioning. <sighs> Play along with her game, you say. But I feel like she's playing along with what you think. But then again, I kind of love the the fact she's so playful. Also, it's not a dress. Thank you for getting me that answer. <sighs> Let's push for answers, whatever. I'm really not in the mood for your little games, Makado. You saw what happened earlier. Who are you? What did you steal from Taliha? I crossed my arms and made a face that was probably a carbon copy of the one I gave her a few weeks back in the men's room. Today has been totally insane and so far everything I know tells me it's all your fault. Well, it's, I suppose it's mostly Amanda's fault too for not mentioning her secret and that little outfit that came with it. I swung my leg over the crappy bench of the table and took a seat upon her. Are you going to give me some answers or not? Well, I suppose I did promise I'd tell you. She put a finger to her chin and tilted her head to the side. It made her long, dark hair cascade over her shoulder. If the situation were different, I might even admit that. Was kind of sexy in its own way. Mind being the operative word. It was. I need to start with a question for a question. Yeah. Have you ever felt like your life is wrong? Always. Oh, what kind of metaphysically metaphysical bullshit was this going to be? What? Have you ever seen the way adventures and stories are portrayed in video games, anime, or something else and just said that your entire life wasn't the way it should be? Always. That you were too smart, or too cool, or too skilled to live such a miserable and fair existence? Okay, too smart, definitely not. Too cool, definitely not. Too skilled, no. <laughs> God damn it. But miserable and fair existence, maybe. Or maybe I just deserve that. Anyway, yes. Jacob, my life used to be wrong, and now it's not. That's why we get to have fun together. I said I've had enough with my original domination that come, came to this one. What? 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 That was a record scratch moment in my brain right there. Was there a single person in my life who wasn't apparently secretly an anime character? You're telling me you're from another dimension. What are you going to say? That is, is impossible? Yes, that's impossible? Question mark? It's kind of inspiring to think that after a day like today you can still say the word impossible with a straight face. You really are amazing. Makoto Gil let me again. For this time it felt more genuinely affectionate. I don't know how to describe it. Like she wasn't talking with me for once. I'm telling the truth. She reached down into... Where did she reach into exactly? I was quite able to see from my vantage point. But the important thing was that she pulled out this. This thing that looked like a stereotypical sci-fi contraption. I mean, it had weirdly placed light bulbs and everything. This machine was invented by someone. Someone who was close to me back in the world I came from. It lets me jump around the multiverse. I tried a whole bunch of other worlds first, all of them were wrong in some way, but now I've been here for a few months, it's perfect here. Sorry. She shot me a spine, tingling, dancing green. I didn't trust the expression for a second. Let's go with her. And so far you've been perfect too. Huh? How many of those realities did you leave for some reason that had to do with me? You want to know how important to me you are? That's sweet. She put a hand to her chest in a mercy meaning gesture. I felt my frustration starting to boil. Why? She'd already told me so about her just now, but there was still so much she was keeping hidden. Though so I didn't mostly believe what she was saying. Incredible as the idea that she was from an alternate reality was, it was not more incredible than the idea that Amanda was a magical girl. Eh. Fine, be mysterious. I mean, I like the fact that she's mysterious. Oh, so I have your permission now! Yay! Ah, uh, why do you leave your original dimension for? You said it was wrong somehow, but I don't really understand what that means. It means I fell in with a bad crew, and I didn't like it, so I left. 
for the first time in the conversation, maybe for the first time ever, it felt like I'd thrown my of guard. She paused one turning just to chew over her words, then a flash she perked up, it was almost like a cartoon light bulb, went over, over her head. Say, you think the rave is open by now? My jaw hung open involuntarily. This had to be the most naked escape attempt for a conversation I'd experienced in my entire life. What? Drave, I want to dance, we should go! I can't dance for. I slammed my hand down the table. We're not done here, you still have to give me a good explanation as to what happened this morning with Tadiha. And I will, I will, on the way to Drave, come on! She half jumped out of her seat and slinked around the table. I took hold my ground, but there was only so much stiff tugging and men could handle. So tugging, tugging. Not like getting you up forcibly, nice. Besides, she had promised to continue explaining what had happened earlier, so I rose from my seat and followed along after her as she skipped down the hallway. So, why did Taliha think that you robbed one of her people's sacred treasures? Because I robbed one of her people's sacred treasures? Okay. Why exactly did you do that? Oh, that's it, because I could. You ask a stupid question, you get a stupid answer. Wow, how do you know my policy? <laughs> You're still going to have to expand that one, Makuta. Why, it's what I do, I'm a cat burglar. Rawr! I look for the biggest, shiniest treasures I can find and then I take them. To go along with that insightful declaration, she made a cat swap in the air gesture. gesture. This fact didn't go unnoticed by a fat man with a ponytail who let out a loud whistle at Makoto. Makoto being Makoto giggled loudly at the attention she received. Back in my home reality, I heard of Avia and its special treasures. I looked around and figured out they still exist in the reality, so I went and took one. I stole it right from under Taliha's nose too. You can't imagine the look on her face when she realized it had it. I had it. I bet I can. I rubbed my temple. Taliha had certainly proven how cross she could look back during the earlier fight. So basically, all of this your fault. We could be having a normal conversation right now if you didn't steal her stupid treasure. Correct. And you can't just give it back to her and call it a day. Why would I do that? What if I said I'd tell Taliha where you are if you don't, presuming she survived? Oh, I don't mind if you did, I'd just shoot her again. But neither of us want that to happen, so I won't. One wonders how many times I can blast that girl before a recovery tank won't save her. Recovery tank? Arrest an eyebrow. That sounds almost like the healing tanks from Dragon Orb Z. Oh, just this thing she has that lets her survive that kind of thing and regenerate very fast. It's why that will see the last of her blue tush. Okay, so it was the healing tank from Dragon Orb Z. Well, at least she wasn't dead. Dragon Orb Z. Not bad actually sounding. You make my life so much more complicated. And more interesting, I guess. Other in dimension. Intergalactic cat burglar. Sure. Sure. I let out a long sigh. This was just about as far as my brain was willing to take this. Let's go, Rafe, I guess. Yay, let's go! My god suddenly clung to my arm and went sprinting down the hallway with alarming speed. It was almost effortless the way she was able to drag me around. Just how strong was she? Actually, I have an idea. What? Before we could arrive at the back segment of the con hall where the rave was, normally shuffled off to, Makoto took a sudden sharp turn into one of the few hallways without anything con-related going on. We went just far enough to leave easy side of range of anyone else. The entire time alarm bells were ringing on my brain. Being alone, Makoto was... Well, it was dangerous. That was when a flash of red light rang out. When Kirt Makoto had changed to the skin tight catsuit she had been wearing earlier, I stood there gawking. Whew. You can do that anywhere? It's molecularly bonded to me. One snap and I'm stylish and ready for action. A perfect idea for raving. Don't you agree? A quick glance over her curves, one that only seemed urged on by the way she made a show of extending her booty, confirmed her statement. She was sleek and sexy. 
I avert my gaze to the side. I was probably blushing too, knowing my luck. Let's just go. It was still, if anything, a bit early, so there wasn't a line outside the rave. We just had to flash our badges to the guy at the door and sneak in. Not later, Mako's badge was gone. Inside was a flurry of movement and sound, dark and silhouettes of people moving their body in often spastic, but occasionally rhythmic ways. I guess mostly spastic. The floor shook and the beat bounced. Like normal for an anime con rave. This song was a hyped up nightcore version, okay that's a good one, of an anime op. This time it was even being sung in English. It's good until the last sentence. Like an angel of cruel and merciless intent. Go forth young boy and you'll become a legend. Huh. What the hell are you... I don't know. The translation didn't seem right, but the aberration on the lyrics. But if Makoto was troubled by the plausible misrepresentation of the Adam Jellian team, okay. I'm sorry, I haven't watched it. She didn't show it. After all, she was too busy cracking some glow sticks. I have some of those in my card rank, actually. Mm. Then she starts, started to dance. She swayed her body left and right, pounding her arms left and right perfectly on cue with the ounce, ounce, ounce of the beat. Her head turned with it, waving her hair back and forth like it was part of her body. Like, wow! I stood in awe. Obviously, she was incredible. Just going to stand there with your jaw hanging, bad boy. Dance with me. Wait, there's a zipper. Well, I wasn't going. Uh, I wasn't going to just take that lying down. That was challenge. Thankfully, that wasn't my first con, and in this case, that meant this was my first rave. I grabbed a glow stick off a surprise Mako and started to move my body. The two of us danced in tandem. She was much better at it, of course. She was gracefully able to roll her hips to the melody and twist her body in ways I didn't even think possible. But I was keeping pace. I was just doing a two step. I learned at the con <laughs> dancing panel two years back. I know that move! <laughs> Oh, you're not bad! You know, it's funny that this two step is enough for guys to, to basically make it to survive through the dancing. Okay, you know, I feel like she might like this, so. No, let's go with this one, I think. I was keeping up her as best I could, but Magda was just better than me, as, as this was. Uh, maybe that was the wrong choice. No, you know what, no, I kinda want to surprise her. I want to surprise her. Let's try. But I wasn't happy just matching her, I don't know what came over me. Maybe it was just the astonishing side of her body motion, but for a fleeting moment I managed to overcome all my frustrations with DJ and her specifically. What are you talking about? Okay, I have no frustrations when it comes to Makoto, I'm sorry. I could just enjoy the flow of the music and the proximity of our bodies. Which is why I wanted that proximity to close even just a little bit. As the song shifted this time to a remix of the Digimon Red Battle team, I made my move. I moved up closer and closer as the song went on. Clearly Makoto noticed this since she had a glimmer in her eyes, but she didn't make a move to stop me. Yes! Soon we're dancing more inches from one another. Please use normal uh, length measures, thank you. Every so often I felt like the touch of her body brush against me. Mine. It was. It felt good. Of course it was, I mean. Turn around. Literally got her attention. Without seconds hesitation, she complied. She was half grinding her ear against me or to the beat of the music. We must have made quite a sight, well, her more than I. I was in, it was the most provocative dance in the world, but for just a moment, the curls of her body, her torn muscles, her strange outfit, I could feel all of it. We might have danced that way for 10 minutes, we might have done it for an hour, I didn't know. We kept dancing even so, as one so handed and another started. All around us were guys dancing with light up glows, girls looking like they were trying to clean up an oil spill that could only be repelled by mesh. <laughs> And an uncomfortable number of people in cheap bondage gear. 
That's why it came as such a surprise when Mako suddenly turned back around. She gave me a smile and leaned towards my ear to whisper to me. This was fun, darling. Talking. Dancing. Let's do it again soon. And then it threw Mako to fashion. She suddenly plunged to the crowd. Before I even realized what had happened, she was swallowed up by their bodies in motion. Makoto? Makoto! She was gone. Again! Fantastic! I grumbled in frustration. But there was nothing to be done. If Makoto wanted to vanish on me, there was little I could do to stop her. Now, sans dancing partner, I left Rafe. I had to walk out doing an uncomfortable step. In precaution, so no one could easily see the slight tent that had formed in my pants. Okay, you know what? That last line kinda not needed. Someone might take this not correctly, because someone might think he actually did that, even if he didn't. And who? Returning to my room after my run in Makoto, I was in for something of a surprise. Human Jacob! When I saw it, I nearly jumped in my ear. I was expecting a robot ambush. Well, not a robot ambush, anyway. Oh, fuck, it's you. Your presence is requested back on the ship. Strongly. I took a second to get my bearings, make sure I didn't pee myself. A thought occurred to me. There are from a treatment from the NAS, so I need to request my presence. I should tell it to give it itself an oil em enema. Did you threaten to arrest me and bring me back to your homeworld for trial? What do you expect to agree to that? When Magical Defender Pig returned the princess, she said that. A voice came out of the machine that was such a pitch perfect creation of Mandas that I was pretty sure it was recorded. I swear with heart of flame, do anything to Jacob and I will give you a word of pain. Seriously, I'll fucking do it. Don't try me. The giant returned to its normal speech voice and took on a tone that I could fucking swear was bitterness. Your same thing freedom are guaranteed. That left me in a jam. On one hand, Amanda was still waiting to see me, and just talking to one of them wasn't enough to give me a handle of things. But I have to admit, I was curious to see, at the very least, how Tali was doing. Who to pick? Who to pick? I mean, it's an easy choice, I'm sorry. It's an easy choice. I mean, <sighs> to be honest, <laughs> if there's anything about Amanda, the choice is easy. We do something else. Taliha. Fine, fine, I'll go with you. First of all, also, because Taliha is more interesting for sure. I'll go with you. I shall assume that Taliha is still alive. Before I could even so much as finish the sense the giant's arm shot out and grabbed my wrist. The moment they did, everything went in darkness. It was like I was both alive and dead at the exact same time. Good! <laughs> what the fuck was that? I looked around, blinking rapidly. Somebody to see my surroundings was coming back. But the more I could see, the more confused I became. For starters, I definitely, definitely wasn't in my room anymore. I was standing in a large hangar bay. The whole room was made from materials I had never seen. Smooth like plastic, but hard like metal. I put my hand on the ground and felt like the surface of a polished stone. China streamed about working on various maintenance tasks. They moved in packs up, uh, of up to five, scrubbing the walls and decks. Just how many of them were there? Still, basic inter inference said that the ship had to be their ship. That was the first transporter. The further answer your query, your majesty, your highness is not the keyist. Right, face transporter, right. I scratched my head. They explained why the pair of ginoids that Mako shish kaboo before had vanished. When you used the teleporty thing on her before, when she was dying. The face transporter must be key to a ginoid human. The ginoid units had already been extracted before she was shot and we could not retrieve her without direct contra contact. Uh, should you be telling me all of this? They were being fully flippant about giving me all of this potentially useful information, especially since they had been trying to arrest me less than 12 hours ago. Calculating! Jacob threat level! 0.1%! Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Yes! Uh, well, that seems a little low. What if I tell Makoto? What is a Makoto? A second giant chimed in. Calculation decayed 80% chance Makoto is time of food! What? No, 
Oh my god, where do you even come up with that? Whoever must have programmed the logical deduction programs on these things, probably deserve to be put on a trial. Seriously, Vaughn, where's Taliha? Right over here! The giant directed me through a large circular doorway. The hatch made from the same smooth but drop material hissed open. What is that? The room I was shown looked something like a laboratory or a medical bay. It was filled with sleek terminals, womaned by gynoids. But in the center of the room there was a large green tube of liquid. And flowing in the middle of the tube with eyes closed, and not scratch on her body was Taliha. That is the recovery tank! Taliha's body was in a state raised by the technical status mostly dead. By the time she arrived, this is this thing from the cutlery with the technical name all dead. Rather than try to heal the damaged body, it instead bombards it with temporal rays in a controlled environment to ensure that it functions as for it were never damaged. As a result, the healing pulse were able to function effectively on her. She will be fully recovered in a matter of hours. Please wait outside in the meantime. I had to struggle not to gawk. There was almost something serene about the way that she looked. Flo floating in a tank. You can heal people that fast? It is standard technology. Human made the majority of the galaxy has access to it. If you had not been informed of such innovations, it is because your people are backward. There you have it. Entire population has been told to be backward. Great. Entire population of Earth. Guys, we are backward. And pathetic. Oh yeah, also uh, pathetic, yeah. Touché. Or should I say touché, whatever. Thank you, I can wait for the whole about further input. There was a moment of silence as the stupid robot seemed to consider my request. Confirmed! Do not break any pink! A pair of giants ushered me back out of the recorder room and sealed the door behind me. There's a fucking Gundam? My god, naturally I considered using the opportunity to scout Talika's ship, but that option seemed like a disaster when you have too many giants around. But how are you going to raise your threat level? Thankfully, I was not left waiting long. A few minutes later, I left the room. I heard a loud yawn coming from inside the chamber. Time? I mean, time? 88 couple legs hours since you entered the tank. No, I want to sleep more. I rolled my eyes. Your Royal Highness, your mission is ongoing. The human man is waiting for you. Can you wait a bit longer? Your Royal Highness. Yeah, yeah. I'm up, I'm up. The door is open again, this time with Tadiha emerging from it. She had this big goofy grin on her face that suggested apparently being shot wasn't enough to kill her puppy-like mood for the day. Hello, human! Tadiha walked over and squished me with her breath rummingly hard hug. Tadiha was shockingly strong. When she broke the hug, I coughed twice to catch my breath. You're awfully excited to see me. I thought that I was a liar. That was before I knew you were friends with Magical Defender, human. I'm not. The human film of a large memory said that you <laughs> had returned me to my recovery tank. Yes, but no. The human with Oh my god, wonderful. Thank you for that. The two of us started walking down the hallway, side by side. Tadiha put her hands on her head as she walked, and she stepped mostly by kicking her full feet back forward. Every so often she interrupted with way own. So, we're good then, not enemies. Of course, a just survivor cannot bear a grudge against an innocent, especially one who she owes her life to. So, you will leave her in peace? Maybe just maybe I'd be able to talk her into just up and fly away without any more shootouts in the middle of the con. Ha <laughs> ha You're a funny human male! Of course not! I still must find the thief and bring her to justice! Uh, the last time that you tried to do... you died! Taliha's expression didn't seem to change at all. Clearly she recognized the importance of what had happened. She did credit me for saving her life after all, but she seemed entirely unconcerned about going for another round against Makoto. And the next time I want, she took one of my people's most precious treasures! It must be returned and she must pay the price! 
what did she even take anyway? Perhaps I've seen her with it and can tell you where it is. A fat chance, since Magot basically hasn't shown me much of anything besides her tits. But it would be nice to know what everyone is fighting about anyway. I'm not quite certain. I have physical description of the object only, and even that is top secret. Are you kidding me? You... you don't even know? Nope! Just Sarmavia doesn't question her orders. She obeys them to the letter, to the letter. Wait, what if nobody knows and she just entered the area and went away with, all, with nothing, basically? I rubbed my temple softly. I'd been back in her presence for five minutes and Talia had already given me a headache again. So, just to get this straight, you're following Thrief, you don't know to retrieve an object no one has told you anything about, using an army capable of even getting it back. Correction, totally capable of getting it back. You could just call home. Tali Hannah would cry at me. Okay, that one seemed to have struck a nerve. Never! I must do this alone, otherwise I'll be the shame of my sisters and of the entire royal family. A princess of Avia never fails, she never surrenders. At this point I threw my hands up in the air. What was I even supposed to do here? I'm gonna talk Talika into backing down, Amada's only setting is stubborn, and God or Naga alone knows what my god is thinking at any moment. You're crazy. I don't even know what to do with you. Why do you even send your robots to talk with me anyway? Because we need your help, Jacob! Our locator devices have not been successful in tracking the thief since she last disappeared. We should recalibrate at her shielding. But you seemingly know her, you can find her with your help, I simply know that I'll be able to bring her to justice. And what tells you I'm willing to help with that? So please, won't you even consider helping us? Oh my god, the puppy eyes. She put her hands in a prayer gesture and gave me a big wide eyes, setting aside the fact that her planet even has a prayer gesture. I admit I was too unprepared for the Sario-esque militant cuteness of the expression. I'll think about it, girl. Look, I said I know that if... Well, at least I used to think I did. You could say the same about the childhood friend. I don't think she's really all that deep, that bad deep down. But if she stole your people's thingy... Treasure! Treasure, then that's a problem and it needs to be addressed. So I'm going to do what I can to convince her to return to treasure. But if I cannot do that, then I will consider helping you cut her. And when I say consider, I don't mean I agreed to it yet. I mean consider. Yeah, Alright. That was when Daliha responded by rushing me with another hug. This one far more powerful and bone crushing than the previous one. I think I felt my back snap. Uh. Today you have proven yourself a true friend to the people of Avia. Yeah, yeah. Just get off me. Wait, why? I mean... I, ma I, I understand that she might be crushing your bones, but doesn't that hug feel good? Alright, while this has been fun, I'd like to return to the convention now. Okay, you know what? I think I'm after the alien girl. Right then, I need a robot appearing right behind us. Excellent, I will accompany you initially. Wait, what? I felt something cold on my shoulder, a metallic band. Hand, then without any further warning, the world went dark again. The same darkness like all light itself was gone in the universe. When we poked back in the reality, we were standing right where we had when the giant had taken me before. Wait, don't tell me you two are my roommates. I'm going to be sick. Tali had turned to her giant. Good thinking! Setting around the relay point here. Then she turned back to me. Is this your domicile? I was still too busy retching and heaving to re answer her. It was no matter, she was already half bouncing around the walls, looking at things. Before long, she ended up right in front of the freaking gorilla painting. What is the person of this visage of a primitive ancestor? I have no idea. I ushered Talika somehow out of my room into the hallway. Out of my room into the hallway. Yeah, uh, now that I think about it, is this really a demo? 
Because it doesn't feel like one. Uh, I should tell her somehow out of my room into the hallway. It would be best to get her out there, in case my hit her toe, unseen roommate appeared. It was my home anyways, this temporary place of residence, for a special event. Ah, yes, yes. The religious ceremony. Talia skipped along beside me, swing her arms wide. Wait. No, what? Ah, this is not a religious ceremony. It's called a convention. It's a gathering of fans of uh, uh, media pieces together to share their mutual enjoyment. Media pieces? Doesn't your plan have any fiction? Stories about people who never existed? Like the legendary heroes of old? Just then a group of players dressed like the teen giants passed us in the hallway. The Marful Men, oh yeah. 1980s, new teen giants as opposed to the TV show Titans 2. Is it part of the traditional garb of the ceremony? The moment they passed, Taika pressed the button on her suit. Once she did, a small burst of light flashed. How do I look? Different. Taika emerged from the light, now dressed in a detail for the decoration of the exact Starford cosplay that had been the group that walked past us. I touched the material, it even... Whoa, where did you touch, man? It even felt like hand-stitched fiber. How exactly did you do that? My infiltration suit allows me to a specific piece of garb I control my mission. This fake hair apparatus is quite silly. Tally her just her week. I just blinked twice. My way to hold this belief about the world around me was in a fatal tailspin. Right. All around us the convention hall bust. Tally whipped her head around with an open jaw. At these conventions, many humans choose to dress up as the characters from our fiction. Our legendary hero stories tend to be more varied on this planet. We have an entire rich history of different stories about all kinds of different topics. Stories about battles, intrigue, romance. I see, I see. Ah, and this strange human event is an opportunity to celebrate the finest of these stories. The shit is as well. She did get it. Well, kind of. I was almost proud of her. At that point, we passed the big sign for the Axart Online and Axart Online fan fiction mod. It had a sign that must have been taken from one of the movie. By the way, I okay. I I must say I'm not keeping up with what's being uh, aired now, but I've seen a certain scene from the latest Art Axe Online. Uh, I think six episodes was it or fifth? With Alice arriving. Whoa. To be fair, uh, she might, I think she's, if I'm not sure, given that uh, Shinon is voiced by my favorite face, voice actress basically, but aside from that, I think, uh, okay, because of that, Alice might be my second favorite uh, character in this by basically. Anyway. Uh, it had a sign that must have been taken from one of the movie theaters back when it came out. This human sign declares for a story called Dark Art Online. Is it one of the finest human stories? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, no. Talia glanced skeptically back and forth between me and the sign. If it is not one of the former stories of your people, then what is the purpose of having you celebrated? She asked. Okay, so my tongue froze. Just how was I going to explain a concept as complex as this to someone with no experience with stories more advanced than heroic myths? All these four people get very attached to the stories we tell, right? Our normal lives are often quite imperfect. We get sick without having a regeneration tank to save us. We don't have food replicators or whatever you have to get us food free of charge. No, no, no! The giants may call out food. I rolled my eyes. Sure. Hell, I imagine even being a real Fabia is no picnic, considering the fact that you did get shot earlier today. That he glanced to the side. So, when people get sad or bored or lonely, they can go to the stories and have a place where they feel like they belong or feel like life is exciting. Oh, by the way, Witcher cosplay. It gives us a place to be ourselves. I need to play Witcher. 
There was a moment of silence. I could almost see the gear strength Tali had brain. For perhaps the analog reference didn't fit Tali has so well. Uh, that is why so many humans band together to separate these stories, regardless of if I are good or not. But I'm not going to say that being good is important, but at the end of the day, it's about what individual people get from it all. I was half loviating now. It was kind of easy to get into the heat of the explanation. Do they get a chance to escape? A chance to feel confident? A chance to discover themselves? That's the reason why we come out here and dress like our favorite characters. Taliha put a finger to her lip and tapped it a few times. She strained her lips and squinted in a childish look of consideration. Alright, that I feel about. I need to check out if this story is open today after my work. Because there's something I need to buy. And by that I mean a bit of a lightning. I'm uncertain that I understand. It's not, damn it. Whatever. But you creatures do appear to be having a great deal of fun, so I'll explore the convention in greater detail. Thank you for your aid, Jacob. I sorry. I sighed and dropped my shoulders. Sorry. That was progress. Yeah, I didn't think it would make much sense either. Thanks for the info. The two of us arrived near the front of the convention hall. I had to help her with a door along the way first. This has been a helpful cause version, but I'm afraid that duty becomes me. I must track down the thief. Are you sure you're going to be okay searching convention without a guide? For a moment, I was afraid she was going to try to make me spend the entire time searching with her. Of course, I was well known for my tracking and penetration skills back at the Justice Academy. We will meet again soon, human male. You have my word. Taliha gave me one last wave and wandered off into a convention hall. I was almost inspired by her confidence. Until she walked right to a cut out of Thanos and knocked it over. She drew her gun and pushed it right in the cut out's face. Do not think you can take a prince of happy hours! You rushed! Huh? Your decoration piece? Carry on! I shook my head softly and turned away. That was going to go smoothly. It was about an hour later, and I finally stole away from the madness of the cone for dinner. Nothing special. A few friends. Yes, I have friends besides Amanda. Were at Subway and asked me to join them. It was eerie. Leery? Leery, of course. Subway, like all of the other restaurants, raised its prices for the convention. Great. Or at least I think it does. It certainly always feels like venues raise the restaurant prices when the con is in town. That's how it is. But this dinner came to a slightly early end when I got an urgent text. Hey Jacob, can you go back to your room for a minute? No. My room. On the way back I scratched my head. Why exactly why was I being told to go back to my own room rather than meet her in hers? That question would be subsumed by much more important questions soon as I opened the door to my room. Hello? That was when I discovered what was happening inside. Amanda, who was transformed with all of the sparkly runs that entailed, was on one side of the room holding up her self scepter. <sighs> it was going pink menacingly. Taliha was on the other side of the room, pistol drawn as Amanda. She was backed up by a pair of giants who both had their weapons aimed at Amanda as well. Also, they were not heaping piles of rubble for once. What the fuck? She started it! The two were bubbling incoherently, the words of each making the other statements impossible to follow. I rubbed my temples and stalked across the room to my bed. This was the second Mexican standoff I'd encountered in like 7 hours. One at a time, one at a time. Why are you in my room? How this happened? No seriously, why are you in my room? Defender Pin called me to submit in my room to discuss the conflict and come to an accord as to how to handle the rotten thief. And by the power of my words of peace and kindness, I attempt to. Yeah, bullshit. To bring us together as friends forever. Bullshit. I call bullshit on this one. Despite the human and our highness could not come to agreement on how to handle Madron the Thief, who we have informed is named Makado and is not a type of food. Whoever the fuck programmed the stupid giant must have done a horrible job. Okay, so none of that explains how we ended up in my room. How did this happen? 
Well, I told the alien menace that if I wished to take Makoto with them, they were short out of luck. I knew that a stalwart Ali, such as self, would agree, so we went to the room and list your valiant head in our dispute. And while you were waiting for me, you all got so heated that you started pulled out the weapons. I suppose that is accurate. I look back and forth between Talika and Amanda. Alright, first of all, you all need to power down all of your goddamn lasers, get out of battle mode or whatever and transform back into normal. Talika and Amanda exchange an embarrassed glance. Clearly, neither of them had meant to end up in that situation. In this one, they power down all their fleshy dodas and magical transformations. Okay, good. I leaned back on my bed and took in a moment to breathe. This wasn't as dire a situation before. Certainly odds were good no one would end up in a pool of blood, but I still need to be diplomatic here. Apparently preventing them from murdering each other was my job. So, lay out your cases for me. What do you both want? What do you both disagree about? Amanda, you go first. I don't know why. <clears throat> okay, is it me or are those guys not playing through the entire game? Or they are skipping through most of it? Because there has been videos today, yesterday. And yeah, it's like that. Weird. <sighs> anyway, Talika pouted but didn't say anything. I'm on the side and gave me a warm smile. I couldn't tell if it was genuine appreciation or an attempt to manipulate me into supporting whatever her side of the argument was. Which I won't do, obviously. Firstly, both, probably both. Okay, thank you for bringing me sanity back. Also, thank fuck I can talk again like a normal person. She breathed inwardly and took a moment to compose herself. So, I explained that to our little princess here. Okay, she's not that little. Uh, that no matter what the laws of her plan say, she can just barge onto another planet and go around acting like the law. The laws of her people stops at the edge of her system. As far as the galaxy is concerned, me and the magical defenders are the law enforcement of this planet. If she had a complaint about one of its citizens, she had every chance to go up to me and ask me to read the missing artifact. So, unless she backs off and stops trying to exercise her authority way of south of bounds, I'm going to stop her and I'm going to keep stopping her until she backs off and learns that I am in charge here. Talika's hair almost stood on the edge, I saw her even start to reach for her gun before stopping. Our trash was stolen! Do you stand a stake that lying down? Talika, come down, talk to me, not her, thank you. I turned to Talika to hear her side of it. What's your argument here? Argument? The human team Makoto stole our national treasure! She is a criminal, she deserves punishment, and I plan to bring it to her! She stomped her foot like a petulant child. Yeah, I understand that there is under protection of the magical defenders. Which is a shitty maid by the name, by the way. But it is also a non galactic civilization, defends the Earth's protectors, not its leaders. True. True. Funny how every time something happens, like Galactic wise, f humanity basically act like they are at the top. That's true. That's sickening, by the way. Anyway, besides, am I expect to pay some local authority to matters my nation's national treasure? If a thief stole another of the artifacts and brought it over to a Mobius 4, does that make it the subject of Mobius 4? She leaned back and crossed her arms, an almost haughty pose. Mm. Of course not, it's the belonging of my people. Besides, she would never hand over one of you Earth monkeys Nice. for extradition to my world, nor would she ever paralyze the search. The defenders would not aid our quest for justice, they would hamper it. True. That is my argument. I buried my face in my head, take a moment to soak it all in. Wasn't there some kind of car diplomat or something I could call to deal with this shit instead? Jesus Christ. Then I straightened my back and looked back and forth between Talika and Manda. I want to appear authoritative, like a neutral arbiter, not that I thought it worked. Alright, here is what I think. Sorry. 
Amanda. But I'm not on your side. I mean, then again, you say you need to protect Makoto, but technically she's not from this earth. So, why do you care? Also, they are only after her, not anyone else. Yeah, fuck it. I wonder if you actually caught Makoto, would you turn her over to Talika? Not just the stone artifact, you, but give Makoto to her? Uh, I actually doubt that she would do both. Just like humans, they wouldn't give the freaking artifact back, I'm sure. Sorry, I'm sure of that. Where is my rose? Said her. I'd know her too goddamn long. Now, not to be able to read her like a visual novel. Come on, be honest. No, probably not. But are you saying that you want Smurfette? How dare you. Over here to drag off your little girl toy into space? My what? I seriously doubt that Mako was anyone's toy. Thank you. I'm not saying anything like that, I'm just asking you to understand it from Taliha's perspective. She couldn't have gotten what she wanted just by coming to you. Taliha did a cute little happy jig in a place. If I had to say what she looked like, I'd say she looked like a child in the supermarket being given candy. You know, if a child in a supermarket was flanked on both sides by battle droids. Yeah, I knew that the Earth May would see the justice on my case. Are you kidding me? How can you even be saying this? Oh, does her almost seem to stand up with rage? I don't know. I mean, I don't want her to actually do it, but it does sound like Michael Dorley did seriously break all kinds of interactive laws or whatever. We should at least help her get back there, in fact. She's on Earth without fucking permission. She's... I don't know. What permission? Since when do you need permission to be on Earth? I know and any of that. I had said. Illegal alien. Shut up! I'm going back to my room! Good. Good. Amanda growled at me and stormed out of the room. Talika stuck her tongue out slightly as she passed. It was very mature. We're not my new friend. I'm sure Magical Defender Pink will soon understand the error of their position and hate us in our search. She's simply aggravated. I stared at the doors of the early call, but I hadn't pissed off Amanda too much. I needed someone to talk to at lunch after all. Maybe you will finally find your roommates. Yeah, I hope so. I know Amanda, she has a temper, but she's never been able to seriously stay mad at me, at least for too long. For whoever said it was our search. I raised an eyebrow at Taliha. Well, you did agree it was right to scores. I sighed and walked over to the door. This was a fun little diversion, but I really did want to get back to the con for whatever time I could manage. I'm surprised you are not more mad at Amanda for getting in the rifle. Why, Defender and I have our difference, but without her aid today, my life would have been great for you. I admit, I was less than bloodic during the conversation. But I never would have actually fired on an agent of the peace. She has her mission, and I have mine. I couldn't help actually smiling at that. As much of hassle as Talika was, basically constantly, she did at least seem to have a good heart. I could respect that, for I'd have appreciated more if she didn't keep pulling guns on my friends. Well, I'm glad you see that at least. With that, I ducked out of my room. Maybe that j Rock concert I had been hoping to catch was still going, but considering the rest of how today had gone so far, I was sure the gods weren't kind. Today was the longest day of my life already, and it was still not even done yet. End of current version! Whew. Okay. You say end of current version? Now I'm freaking curious. About that concert. So I'll be honest with you. I loved it. <laughs> I mean, it's nicely done, you know, for the perspective of the eye. Uh, and also, another thing, it might not have like too deep of a story, but you do, you should know that. I like to play those games that are more of, more like funny way, kind of funny as well, you know. They just like play around with the story, with characters. I love it when it happens. That's why I love Sakura games, like 
They are there, they don't have too deep of a story mostly. But, like, they are the relaxing type. You need those type of games as well. This one is one of those, and I absolutely adore it. Uh, anyway, for now, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm getting this to be rendered as fast as possible to be ready for the evening, so I can upload it. It will be the rendering for long, for sure. Whatever. Anywho, uh, cosplay convention crisis. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, the link to the Kickstarter, of course, in the description. Unless YouTube decides, hey, uh, we don't allow those. Like uh, with Sakura Apprentice and the link to uh, Nutaku's store. Yeah. I got a warning for that, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, I got rid of the, of the link over there. I wrote about this to them. That it's deleted. I'm waiting for the warning to be taken down, kind of. Uh, and I got no answer for that. But whatever. Uh, so yeah, mm, again, the link to the Kickstarter in the description, you can support the, the game, the progress of it. I mean, how do I think about it? What goals do you have? Minor Hero CG. Physical figures of the girls? Ooh. But you need to pledge at least 100 pounds for that. Holy crap. I don't have that many. Well, but I enjoyed it. I think I will join the, the area of people who will pledge a little bit. 280 dollars uh, so far. The goal is 9048. 28 days to go. I think we can do it. Anyway, uh, as I said, link in the description. Uh, also link to the demo on each and Steam in the description. See ya. Yeah. Next game, I don't know what it's going to be. Bye bye!